Do luxury brands prevent people from building wealth by incentivizing poor financial decisions? This Asian YouTuber is going viral for breaking it down. Yeah, we got to talk about it. This Hoppa YouTuber, Kara Nicole, dropped a video called How Designer Brands Keep You Poor. And it is sparking a lot of arguments, surprisingly, uh, in a lot of spaces on the internet, particularly Asian circles, because Asians consume a lot of luxury designer products. Yeah, so she also uses a lot of math terms and investing terms. So I, I think it was very technical in a sense. And we're going to go through, we're going to talk about the comment section. We're going to talk about what people are saying, people agreeing people disagreeing our own takeaway so please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the hot pop boys from silly to serious real quick andrew what were her main points in the video that she was making because it was a video essay i mean to sum it up obviously she is more talking about like maybe a lot of women's stuff like bags and and shoes things like that but she's basically saying most of these things do not ever increase in value some of it may hold its value at best but probably not increase um if you invested thousands of dollars into the S&P 500 over 10 years. It's a way better return than investing it into a bag. Um, social media is also just pushing everybody to be in this rat race to just one-up each the other. influencers. And she's also saying that these luxury brands do market and target the lower middle to middle class people who usually do not even have the means to be spending thousands of dollars. Right, because it's trying court. to trick people into getting an aspirational item from the upper class, therefore making people feel better, right? Because they're in this status chase when their bank account or their actual liquid assets do not reflect that level of financial health. For sure. And I think this video is super relevant nowadays. Uh, people are all on social media. And shout out to Kara. I think she broke it down in very simple math terms as well. So Yeah, I mean, I think that for sure... I I don't agree with every single one of her points, but she has a point that luxury consumption probably is at the peak of any point in human history. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Anyway, let's get into the comments section. Andrew, this one was de in defense of the brands. Mm. Somebody said, man, how is it the brand's fault? They did all the work to build up this scepter of coolness, and guess what? People inevitably, they want to hold the scepter. It's just human nature. Yo, that's crazy to use the, the imagery of the scepter that you're holding. But basically, yeah, I mean, listen, that's what brands are supposed to do. They're trying to get you to buy things, right? Yeah. I mean, listen, guys, I think it really depends. If you, like, work at a brand, you're probably more in agreement with that statement. But if, obviously, you don't work at a, a CPG, a consumer brand of good, you're probably like, I'm against that. Um, somebody said, tell this to Asia. They're buying up so much luxury, real fake, whatever it is. They sure value it a lot. It's because Asia's so classist and old school ideas on the European dominance. Yeah, you know, I'm not fully tapped in to Asian society on the level to tell you whether the lower middle class and middle class people are buying luxury brands. I think a lot of them are buying the fake stuff because mm. you, it's easier to find the fake stuff in Asia, to be honest, because it's made there. So it doesn't have to be shipped and travel as far but i will say this in america i do know a lot of middle class people to maybe you know lower middle class people that probably should not even be thinking about buying designer brands but it's kind of our culture out here yeah i mean there's like a different type of credit system you can get money from the bank here and stuff like that i mean it's different culture to culture but for sure in asia i mean a lot of people got new money recently because of the economic boom and it's true whether you're talking about japan korea china all the way to southeast asia a lot of people are buying real bags they probably used to have fake bags because they do value it um Somebody said, you know, there's just an illusion that it gives you wealth and coolness. I mean, it's just all an illusion, and we buy into that illusion. We'll, we'll kill our own credit score to buy into that illusion. Listen, everything is shallow, whether you're, you're focused on health and fitness and looking good and, oh, it, it's more about beauty, it's not about these material things, or some people will be like, well, it's more about the money and the material things than it is about the beauty. Guys... Everything is like in a way kind of shallow right now. But if you made me choose, I would rather take good health and good looks over buying all these luxury brands. For if you sure, had to choose. for sure. Listen, if you're a 10 out of 10 wearing Target clothes or Amazon's choice, I do not think anybody <laughs> in society is going to question you. I will say this, though. I think it really depends on the fishbowl that you inhabit, Andrew. Wearing all designer things means something different in Beverly Hills on Rodeo Drive than it does in the Bay Area where everybody's worried about how much equity they have in a tech company. Is that true? I, I, I mean, like, those, different, those are different fishbowls. They value different metrics. Yeah, in my... In the circles that I've been in in my life, I have to say I would much rather be a productive, uh, impactful wealthy, person, low right? key wealthy person than even having all those things. It but, never really. But I it guess, is true, Andrew. We do work in entertainment, even though we're uh, you could say we're more on like the YouTube side than the Hollywood side. In Hollywood, they care a lot. 
Yeah, I guess they care more. Somebody said, why would you want to wear designer? It makes you a target out in the streets. Um, that's true, but you know, I don't think that's ever stopped anybody from wearing like in certain worlds, like iced out chains because it makes you a target. But if something that makes you a target means that it's valued, it means you're wearing something valued by that fishbowl. Yeah. And also like, I do think more watches and things like that are more, uh, what a lot of people are robbing them for. I mean, I guess, do they really target female bags and female shoes like Louis Vuitton I, I and know, stuff? Yeah. I seen they some do. girls, some yeah. videos of girls getting robbed, robbed for like yeah, a Louis bag. Yeah. Bag-y. Yeah. That's true. Basically you got to be careful if you're flossing, man. People love the words, Andrew. It, the word went from stunting to flossing to flexing to dripping, uh. man. There's so many words for the same thing over the years. Somebody said, you know, the real rich people, they like stealth wealth. They'll wear a thousand dollar plain hoodie that nobody even recognizes except other rich people on the tip label. Do you think that's, that's true? true? That's yeah. true. Rich, dude, you you walk into some of these designer stores out in Soho, and you're like, "How is this hoodie eight hundred dollars for nothing?" But I'm like, "No, no, 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 no." Other rich people know. Somebody was trying to poke a hole in Karen Nicole's argument that Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg were some of the richest people in the world at some point, but they were just wearing like black turtlenecks and blue t-shirts because somebody said, uh, yeah, if you knew Steve Jobs had a custom Issey Miyake turtleneck and Mark Zuckerberg is wearing $600 Bruno Cusinelli t-shirts. So that that goes to the point of stealth wealth, right? Um, it's stealth wealth. And it's never to say that the clothes that they were wearing was cheap but it was simple and it was basically the message that they were sending is that I'm not putting my brain power into fashion. I just have 50 of these beautiful t-shirts that are all $500 each and that's what I wear. Somebody said, uh, I'm pretty sure luxury brands do not target middle class or poor people because those people are realistically going to buy one card holder every two years or three years. I'm pretty sure their exclusive VIP lists are actually filled up with legit rich people. So this is sort of her attacking her argument that they're that the uh, designer brands are trying to extract monetary value from poor people. Um, yeah, I think it's both because there's certain items of the same brand that appeal more to actually upper class wealthy people. Typically the clothes, poor people do not buy. Like even when I was like buying forever 21 clothes, Andrew, I was just getting the card holder. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say like Gucci slides obviously is like a very common one that like basically everybody will spend like three, four, like $300 on because it's fairly affordable two to $300. But it's like, obviously the items that are like 5,000, 3,000, even 2,000 and up, that's going to more appeal to people who actually have money. Yeah. I think that they've opened up recently to get middle class and upper middle class people to buy their items. But traditionally I would say luxury houses for many years, because let's say uh, some of them have been around for a hundred years, were more for upper class people um somebody said uh yeah but we all know somebody at our middle class job who went into debt buying these things literally on mad credit yeah no i mean it happens pretty common somebody said uh you know it really varies brand to brand for example lv i feel like they're targeting middle to upper middle class people but hermes is definitely for just the super rich oh and especially birkin Birkin is super exclusive. You have to be on a certain list. You have to get invited. You're like limited by how many you can buy. You have to like talk to the person and the salesperson has to like approve you and all this other stuff. So yes, there are certain brands that are like way outside of the tier of like a middle class person. Do you think nowadays luxury has become so diverse? It's kind of unfair to like categorize all luxury brands from uh, France or Italy in one bucket, right? Uh, because you know how they they got like, maybe at one point Coach was at the very bottom and nowadays I feel like Coach is not even considered a luxury brand anymore. Mm-hmm. It was when I was growing up. Like I said, man, culture changes. Somebody said kids nowadays got the worst spending habits I ever seen, man. I've, I've been a PT, I make six figures. I've worn the same shirt for 20 years. What's wrong with that, man? I got a big old investment fund. Social media, man. Social media. It's it's the media, Dave. It's the media. Do you think it's because social media opens you up to the exposure of the whole world where somebody that's a PT nowadays in 2023 that's making six figures doesn't want to wear the same shirt for 20 years? Man, if you're very successful, I think all this stuff matters less usually. Somebody said, who wants to live like that? You're being cheap, man. Man, think about it. Most Americans, they work until they retire and then they travel the world when they're 55 or 65. Us Europeans, we don't make that much. We don't spend as much. We have less stuff, but we travel all the time. You know, we are like world travelers, so we do not need these symbols to like tell you our status. 
Um, do you think that's true? I think it's true. Yeah. There, I think that some people, like, in America, we have a lot of nice things, but we work really hard and we work really long into our later years, whereas Europeans, they're, they're almost like having a a slow burn throughout their life. Well, it's very hard to like buy a, have a really big house in Europe because Europe is like already like packed and developed. So I would say a lot of Europeans who are rich and retired, they more value traveling and those experiences. Yes, when you travel out as an American, you realize how many how much Europeans like to travel because you meet them out there. No, no, because when you go somewhere, you will see like, uh, let's just say we're traveling and I see like a hundred white looking people. 97 of them are from Europe. Yeah. And three might be from Canada. Somebody said, uh, you know, our term in England for this is called a cheap aristocrat. We always call these people cheap aristocrats. Hey, I got a new term. How about this? Aristocrap. Ah. Why do you think in America, Andrew, we've had terms for this in the past? I remember Murphy Lee had a song called Bougetto or Ghetto Fabulous, but none of them, uh, none of these really stick. I feel like this whole cheap aristocrat thing, it almost just became normalized. Yeah, I think old money versus new money is generally how people see it. And most of America, Andrew, is new money. Somebody said, duh, I thought this was obvious. I don't need Karen Nicole to explain this to me. What is she, like, 23 years old? I knew this. Boring. Yeah, I think the way she broke it down and also she, she just kind of seemed like a gal that would be into buying all this designer stuff. So, obviously, it's the messenger that matters, but it was a really well-thought-out video, I think. Yeah, I thought she did a really good job and broke down a lot of things that you think are common sense, but common sense, not that common. Plus, people don't know the minutia and the details behind it. Andrew, we have flown on a Spirit Airlines flight from L.A. to Vegas before. With Spirit Airlines, if you guys know, you know, I don't want to trash it too much publicly. The worst airline. And there was people on there, Andrew, who had real monogram luggage. Yeah. So I'm saying people making like conspicuous LV. consumption choices. No, people have LV luggage. And luggage is not cheap. Luggage is expensive. The LV luggage and you flying spirit? I don't know, man. Um, somebody said, you know, it's all about buying the pieces that are assets and maintain value or even go, uh, grow. Shoes and bags, they lose the value. But men, we buy watches and gold or gold watches. And if you buy the right gold watches, they soar in value over time. That is true, man. Watch collecting is probably going to give you a lot better return than, like, shoes collecting. It's true. Right. Unless the shoes are, like... I guess only certain pairs of shoes, but really, essentially, most guys that I talk to, they'll collect watches. Um, somebody said, uh, you know, for me, honestly, though, I wish I would have bought a Chanel bag. That would have decreased uh, less than my index fund did in the past two years. Yeah, I think the last few years was a particular one that doesn't always happen all the time. But yeah, certain luxury goods made it through the recession. And th would you say the luxury goods actually, depending on what you invested in, like high growth tech or whatever, it, it outperformed the stock market? Yeah. I, it also depends on what uh, what point you got into the stock Somebody market. Somebody said, uh, who cares how others spend their money, man? And this VIA guy came in and said, yeah, man, you got to enjoy it, man. We could all die tomorrow, man. What the hell? Who cares? I mean, honestly, there's a valid perspective to this too, right? I mean, we're just playing the odds here, right? Obviously, what there's do this... You what do you work hard for? And somebody said, yeah, man, sometimes if you buy the clothes or the bag and you look better, it gives you more confidence to attack your life. Maybe you'll do better at your presentation at work and get a promotion. Yeah, I think if you are a person who likes the validation or you likes the, you like the comments or you like to show off, you're like, hey, guys, look at what I got. And that gives you that kind of energy and dopamine, then you should do it. You should do it to a certain level because sometimes you need those drivers in your life to push you forward so that you can work harder and harder. Because some people who are like, well, I don't spend my, my money on anything nice. It's like, well, you're not even working hard. So, like, get something. Just find the thing that drives you forward. Yeah, people got to know their own triggers and their own buttons, and everybody is different, even in the same family. Somebody said, hey, man, just buy a knockoff. Just go to Canal Street. Um, What do you think of this? I mean, this no, is not a bad hey, plan. I see and all types of people on Canal Street buying the fake bags. A lot of them are tourists. I see white people. I see black people. I see Asian. All types of people are buying these fake bags. Uh, you know, to me, I don't know what's real or fake, to be honest. Andrew, so. I got a little fake bag 101 for people. The really, really good ones, you got to know somebody on the inside, though. Yeah. Like, like, it's sort of like the, the best fakes of anything. If you're not deep in that circle, you're probably not going to have access. A lot of things is about access. Somebody said, I'm from a poor family, and I used to think like this, but eventually I grew out of it. Mm. Um, I think that this is pretty common, man. I think especially when you're young, Andrew, I remember at a time we could only buy Forever 21 clothes. Forever 21 clothes also designed to look expensive and be cheap, but I had a real LV wallet 
when I can only get Forever 21 and Old Navy clothes. Mm, yeah, and then also someone said, it's all about craftsmanship. Things like Montclair is a ripoff, but there are some luxury brands that really are worth it. Yeah, I do think that's true, but it requires you to be enough in the luxury where you sort of know which items from which brands resell, whole value, appreciate, because it's not everything. I'd say like, Probably 80% of stuff goes down, but like there are some limited edition stuff. Okay, David, what do you think about this comment questioning the morality? Stop supporting brands that exploit Asian labor for wealth. Okay, and also a lot of these things are polluting the environment. So between uh, Asian labor, cost, because a lot of like, you know, poor Asians in Asia are working at these factories or even, or, or even they might even import those. Asians to Italy to make them yeah. in Italy, whatever. I, I guess that's a hard one because obviously those people need jobs and these are jobs. It's so all part of the economy, it's right? It's part of the economy. So it, it, it's a tough argument, but I understand. And I do understand that a lot of the fashion industry is uh, polluting the environment. Let but that's me say a big, this. That's a whole different Let thing. Let me say this. I do wish that Asians built like luxury functional brands that were like maybe a fourth of the price, but still really nice. Because whenever, I'm, ever, I'm always on Amazon looking for new wallets. And I see a lot of really cool designs that the luxury brands would never touch, but they're not made with like the best materials. So what if there was a brand that came through and made these innovative usable designs for productivity but with better materials and then branded it and then asians instead of giving all the money you know shout out to them but to the european brands we could give it to our own brands and we still have quality stuff mm. it's almost like a more elevated uniqlo like a uniqlo purple label who knows somebody said hey guys you guys aren't going to want to hear this but this conspicuous consumption absolutely includes sneaker heads too oh yeah for sure for sure for sure um somebody said you know nowadays this this culture is out of control. The richest man in the world, Arnold, owns all the luxury brands. It used to be the tech guys. This whole thing is a bubble. Luxury is out of control in 2023. I mean, I think she has a point. That's why Carrie Nicole's video went so viral, even though it's common sense, because this culture is peaking. Yeah, and also I will say this, even like three years ago, a lot of people did not knew, know who the Arnold family was. Mm. But nowadays, you kind of talk about wealth more and talk about brands, and we know at least who owns LVMH, who's the head founder and CEO family of LVMH. It's these guys, and they're the richest family in the world. You know what's crazy, Andrew? It almost cycled back to uh, Robin Leach in the lifestyle. I was the rich and famous. Hey, we own a 14th century French winery. And then for a while, it was all tech guys, Bill Gates, Elon, Steve Jobs. Now that the tech, you know, you know, dipped a little bit. People back to the Arnold family ruling the world, selling Hermes bags. I mean, somebody said it really depends on the city you're in. In LA, people really like luxury. Um, they may ha not have as much money as like, for example, people in SF, but people in SF, they, they're wearing like Patagonia and just like hiking vests, but they're worth like 3 billion mm -hmm. in stock options. Yeah, I mean, I think overall, one of my takeaways to kind of round this out, and you let me know in the comments down below what you thought about the comments, about the different stances. Where do you stand on luxury goods? Obviously, depending on your financial decision, it might change, or depending on what drives you. What's a trigger, right? Do material things drive you? You let me know in the comments down below. One thing I will say is like, um, I would say for 90% of people that you meet on an everyday basis, if you just wear some very well-fitting, and this is an argument for fast fashion, I know there's arguments against fast fashion, but if you just wear really nice, well-fitting Uniqlo or Zara or even H&M, and you look good and you look professional, that is going to get you farther probably amongst like 90% of the people that you meet. Like you can actually change the way you get treated if you just buy one of the suits from H&M and Zara. Right. And then you just look nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't act... I'm saying for 90%, I'm saying there's 10% of people who will judge you, oh, I can tell that this is an H&M suit or a Zara suit and this guy doesn't have a Rolex on and actually doesn't have... He has an Invicta on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's 10% of people who are going to notice, but 90% of people will treat you differently. I really think so. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, I think back to the luxury item thing, I think it is really different. I mean, just to address her main points, I think that a lot of luxury brands are finding that the non-rich customer base really likes the monogram items. They really like the flashy items, which are usually mid-tier. If you go to LV, you go to Gucci, and you find their monogram stuff, they got a Tiger or a Bumblebee or whatever limited Murakami thing they're doing, that's usually a mid-tier item. Their ultra high-end stuff usually has some sort of quilted pattern on it, and then they're really, I guess, lower-end stuff, like you can't even tell what it is. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, there are certain patterns. Obviously, the more logo 
out it is, it's probably more of the lower to middle yeah. tier of that brand. And I do think LV was starting to target a little bit more of the middle class and upper middle class because there are brands, Andrew, that like, for example, people don't even know about like Kitan, Laura, Laurel, Piana. I mean, it's almost like an Invicta, right? That's the knockoff canal version, right? I'm, you know, shout it's out to Invicta. It's not a knockoff, I have some Invictas. It's, it's like a takedown. Then you got the Rolex Submariner, right? Which is almost like your basic new money pick, right? And then all the way, Andrew, they got watches like a, a Vacheron, which mm. is like 30K, 40K, and you don't even know what it is. Right, yeah. So no, I, mean, I think it is really like, there's like, it's weird because only old money people used to even know about this world. Then it started trickling down. And now you got the influencer world, like boosting everything. I, I wish we could break out of this time, Andrew. But I just don't know when we will because people are like chasing what they see on the internet. The question is, if people stopped focusing on luxury goods as much, what do they focus their time on? And would they really focus it and put it into a productive manner? Because I think that there's no real argument. Like, I, I know people want to say like, oh, we should take our mind off the luxury brands and then put it towards something else that's more productive. I'm like, who's to say people would even do that though? Right, like who's to say that those are the two choices, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I agree with you that that would be ideal, but who's actually going to do that? I don't know. I think the best, most realistic advice I could give to Americans, I cannot speak for like every country on earth, is to spend on what you really value, but save on what you don't value. For example, Andrew, we buy cold brew at home, right, in the big jugs mm -hmm. for $6. You could get a nitro cold brew from Starbucks for 6 or $7. But of course, the jug at home is going to give you, what, like 10 cups, maybe, yeah. maybe 12 cups, whereas uh, Starbucks is one cup. So, you know, obviously we're not valuing we, we still want the caffeine from the cold brew, but we're not valuing, uh, I guess, like that whole Starbucks experience. Oh, yeah. So I'm cutting back on it, but I'm buying like every single Jordan that's coming out that's a performance Jordan because that's what I want. That's yeah. what I value. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, I think I have an off-white wallet and I also have a Stone Island jacket, but that Stone Island jacket, I plan on using it for years. Right, and it does hold its value to it some extent. It does hold its value and it's very warm. So anyways, guys, uh, buy high-quality things. Um, but just be smart about it and also know why you're buying it. I think that's very important. I think ultimately what you said is true, though. Literally, if you look really good and you got everything else on point, I think nowadays you could buy stuff at even clothing at Target hey, and trust still look me, good, man. Guys, you don't want to be one of these people with, like, all the logos on and then just whack hair, stinky breath, don't know how to talk, don't know how to move. Then you just look like some dumb rich kid who's using their parents' money. Because usually, let's be honest, if you're successful and you had to work for money— and you're trying to buy nice things to look better, you're probably going to like do a better job of looking better because you're already successful in other parts of your life. Anyways, longer conversation, guys. Let me know in the comments down below. We are the Hot Pop Boys. Um, and yeah, until next time, we out. Peace.